All right. Good morning to everybody. Um, today is, I don't even know what May the day is, May 9th. It is 9.50, and I am calling to order the um, joint committees of the Min Minnesota House and Senate Education Finance Committees. Today we are going to be looking at Articles 2 and 6, and you should have those articles in front of you as well as a couple of amendments and so I think we will um, start out with asking um, Ms. Kara to explain the amendments um, amendment A48 and then the amendment A54 before we vote on those um, Christina Para from House Research um, thank you Madam Chair members um, the A48 um, uh, amends uh, language in Article 2. It's the graduation uh, requirements, so it just takes out the whole section and puts a new one in so you can see the changes a little bit more easily. Um, and let me just pull up a page so I can walk you through it a little bit more. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So it takes the, um, the, the, uh, the first parts of, the, of this section were the same for the House and the Senate with regards to um, math and science. Um, and then um, for the social studies part, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yes, and then the, the differences with respect to math were just technical. Um, and in, in social studies, uh, the House and Senate had different language. So this has the House language for social studies. That's Clause 4. And then um, Clauses 5, 6, and 7 were identical for the House and Senate. Um, and Paragraph B was different. So this has the Senate's language uh, with regards to um, the credit and government, the school district being encouraged to offer the course for credit, so that language is struck. And then the personal finance language, um, this combines the House and Senate language. Um, so it takes the 24-25 the school year from the House. Um, uh, the Senate had it as for senior year. This says grades 10, 11, or 12. And then it takes the... the House's language about um, the the teacher uh, license requirements. <coughs> Members, any questions? Madam Chair, um, Senator Duckworth. I apologize. I stepped up to ask a question uh, while it was being explained. Did I hear something toward the end about teacher license licensure requirements as it pertains to the A forty eight? Miss Para. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Madam yes. Chair and Senator Duckworth. Yes. So the, this requires that a teacher of personal finance um, has a f either a field license or out of field permission in agricultural education, business, family, and consumer science, social studies, or math. So it's not about the tier license, it's Got about it. the field. Thank you. Follow up? Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Senator, I mean, excuse me, Representative Pryor, would you like to move to adopt the A48? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to move to adopt the A48 amendment. Great. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The amendment is adopted. All right, now on to the A54. Um, Madam Chair and members, um, the A54 amends language in the charter school ar article, so that's the A6, and if you're on page um, R9, so this section is in the admissions um, section, and uh, this takes the house language, making a change um, on line 229.6, um, deleting while generating pupil units. This language refers to pre-kindergarten uh, pupils in charter schools um, and, and free pre-kindergarten programs. 
And then the second change, uh, well, is in paragraph I, um, basically taking the Senate language there with regards to the order of deaf, blind, and hard of hearing. Members, any questions on this one? All right, seeing none, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? So the A54 is adopted as, as amended, or this amendment has been adopted. All right, now we are going to move on to um, articles. And we have, um, first of all, um, the House. If you look at the list here, we have a number of articles, uh, items within those articles. Okay, and um, again, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Para if you would do the honor of explaining the, the articles and what it encompasses. Oh, yes, uh, Madam Chair and members, um, I'm sorry, did you want me to go do each, each section or go through all of it? Um, let's go through each section and then we'll vote after your explanation. <coughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Article 2, um, Section 2 on the House side amends the e-learning days. Um, uh, e-learning days provision requiring a district or charter school to pay all employees full wages and benefits for scheduled work hours during an e-learning period and to allow employees to work from home to the extent practicable, be assigned to work in an alternative location or be retained on an on-call basis for any potential need. <coughs> any questions on that, members? Okay, with that, um, I'm going to ask Representative Pryor if you would move to adopt House, House Article 2, Section 2. So moved, Madam Chair. All right, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Article 2, it, um, Article 2, Section 2 is adopted. And now um, Article 7, or Section 7. Uh, Madam Chair, members, um, Article 2, Section 7 is the A48 amendment that was just adopted, so oh. it's the graduation requirements. Excellent. That's up. All right, next we will move on to adopt um, Senate. We still need to oh. adopt it. Okay. So all in favor of the um, Article 2, Section 7, please say aye. Aye. As amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The uh, section two article sections two and seven have been adopted. All right, on to the next one, which is the Senate Article Two, Section Five. Madam, Madam Chair and uh, members, I will explain that um, section since it came from the Senate file. And I'm Amory Lewis, Senate Counsel. On uh, um, that is a section that requires or encourages schools to put uh, suicide prevention information on student identification cards. Any questions on that? <coughs> Let's see if Ms. Lewis can find that for us. Madam Chair and uh, members, it is in the Article 2 part, portion of the side-by-side -side language on page R26, the top right-hand side. Members, any questions? All right, seeing none, um, I'm going to ask Senator Swadzinski to move to adopt Senate Article 2, Section 5. So moved, Senate Article 2, Section 5. Thank you. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is adopted. 
All right, moving on to Article 2 sections. We will have 40. These are House articles. And so, uh, Ms. Para, would you please explain Section 42 for us? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, members, Section 42, which is on page R36 of, of um, Article 2, um, this relates to um, the admissions procedures for a child in a preschool program in a non-resident district um, for moving that child from, from pre-K to kindergarten. Any questions on that one? All right. All in favor of the uh, section, uh, Article 2, Section 42, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> All right. Section 42 is adopted, and now we are on to 44. Oop. Yep. Uh, Madam Chair, number Section 44, which is on page R37 of Article 2. Um, this is in the PSEO uh, statute, and it prohibits a post-secondary institution participating in PSEO from requiring a faith statement during the application's process or basing an admissions decision based on a student's race, creed, ethnicity, disability, gender, sexual orientation, or religious beliefs or affiliations. Members, any questions? Senator Duckworth. You can imagine you might have a question or two about this one, Madam Chair. I know uh, this provision specifically has been discussed in both the House and the Senate extensively, so I won't rehash all of that out of respect for our time and the work that we have to get done. Um, you may recall that uh, this was an amendment that was added to the bill in the Senate in a bipartisan way, um, and the language that we added sought to just ensure that eligible institutions were required to be in compliance with relevant law and judicial decisions so that we could potentially continue to keep the maximum options of, of PSEO or higher education opportunities okay. available to high school students and their families. So um, just curious as to why uh, in the conversations that you've had with your counterpart, you decided to revert back to removing uh, <coughs> revert back to that language rather than what was a compromise bipartisan amendment well senator duckworth um i think uh as you said we've had many many um discussions and uh recognizing the fact that a faith-based um a faith-based statement such as the one that that is currently in place um, does preclude certain students from attending those schools we wanted to make sure that that was not um, <clears throat> an impediment to them attending some of the schools that provide PSEO and um, I, I'm wondering if uh, Representative Pryor would like to speak to that um, thank you madam chair and and appreciate the discussion that you had in the Senate and the change that was offered um, but you know I think that we do go back to um, we thought again about the students that were being rejected um, before they, you know, just based on the fact that they could not sign a statement that did not reflect their, their faith. Um, and just to come back and say that this is, um, this is, this is an important uh, value in Minnesota, especially when you look at how our, um, how post-secondary education options, how it's written in statute is that we say very specifically, it is for, um, for non-secular education. So to be tying um, what should be, you know, just education, not religious education, which is written in statute. We're not doing religious education. It's forbidden to do religious education in, um, in PSEO options. Um, so <laughs> it's just a clear, clear separation of, you know what, this is high school, this is education, this is not religious education. And so a faith statement really doesn't play a role in um, should not play a role in students being able to attend um, their, their choice. Thank you, Representative. Um, Representative Key, uh, I think oh. Representative Quay had her hand up. Okay, Representative Gustafson, and then Representative, uh, excuse me, Senator Gustafson, then Senator McQuaid, and then Senator Kresha. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a question for um, Council. Um, and, and this was a question that came up to, with me earlier, too, when, I was, uh, when we were all talking about this. It says it can't require a faith statement from secondary students seeking to enroll, but it can 
is it, am I right to say that they can still ask for one? They just can't require it? Um, Madam Chair, members, I suppose they could ask for one, um, saying that it's optional okay. uh, and not require it of the student. It doesn't prohibit asking. Okay. Thank you. Senator Mayquaid. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I just think it's important for us to, to also, I, I really want it to be said that one, um, you know, for PSEO students and Representative Pryor said this really well, we don't allow there to be religious education. And so tying PSEO, some PSEO, to um, specific faith statements, not any faith statements, right? Some students have many faiths and some students have no faith. Some students have different faiths than their families. Some students don't know um, is, is important that we say that out loud and I and what I have not appreciated is the threatening of taking away PSEO options from our Minnesota high school students because organizations may not be able to require these face statements and that's one thing that I have not appreciated about the conversation is that threatening um, because we know that this is a really important piece to a lot of students um, education and a lot of them especially students that can't afford all four years of, of higher education this is really important for them too and limiting the pool based on their specific faith and their specific tenets of that faith, their gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, um, is just not okay. And so I'm, I'm really glad that we're going back to this language because I'll just note as somebody who works in their you know, regular life at a legal organization, um, relevant law and judicial decisions, judicial decisions can differ circuit to circuit. And so there might be times when it would be actually impossible for us to say what would be the relevant judicial decision if the Seventh Circuit has decided something and the First Circuit's decided something and the Supreme Court hasn't weighed in, we could have differing judicial decisions. So this makes it clear, it makes it understandable, and I think this is going to be really good for Minnesota students. Thank you. Um, Representative Prisha. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll speak out against this move. Um, I, I think that one of the comments that I heard the chair say was this could be an impediment for students. Well, students make decisions about higher education, about their character, and all sorts of things, whether it's how the college or the higher institution handles climate change, for example, or how they handle recycling. If you go to the Air Force Academy, they have a statement right there about integrity and how they're going to uh, hold their students up to a standard of character. So I think we are wading into the waters of I think we're just doing this inappropriately. And I, I agree with Senator Duckworth. I, I think that there was a bipartisan language that was handed on by the Senate, and that was that a best attempt to allow uh, those conversations to happen. I don't believe we have a motion on the table, so I would actually move Article 2, Senate Section 16. For adoption? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. You voted down. I don't any other questions? <laughs> no, any other comments? I request a roll call. <coughs> All right. I so, a roll call. Okay. Let's take a roll call. And here we go. I'm not sure how we do this and what the order is. Okay. Um, Senator Duckworth? Yes. Senator May, <coughs> excuse me, May Quaid? No. Senator Guthrie? No. Senator Swadzinski? Nope. Senator uh, Pryor. Oh, Representative. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Representative Pry Pryor. No. Representative Clarity. No. Senator Hill. Rep. Representative <laughs> Hill. No. Representative Cresha. Aye. And I vote, oh, excuse me, <laughs> Senate, Representative Joachim. Uh, no. And uh, Senator Kunish votes no. <laughs> There being eight no's and two yeses, the motion does pass. Does, does not, not pass, pass. <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> yes. Uh, I would uh, move um, House Section 44, Article 2 for adoption. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. The motion or the article does uh, move on. All right, next we are on to section 45 from article two. Um, <clears throat> this is a house, so um, um, Ms. Para. Um, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members. Um, article two, section 45 is on page R38 of the side-by-side. -side. Um, and this uh, is uh, another PSEO provision requiring a post-secondary institution <laughs> to notify a secondary pupil's school as soon as practicable if the pupil withdraws from the course or stops attending the course. Any questions or thoughts on that? Madam Chair. 
Um, Ms. Uh, Senator Makeway. Just real quick, was this, um, if um, any of the representatives, was just this something that um, wasn't happening before or prior to this language being added? I'm seeing head nods. That's my point. <coughs> Representative Pryor? Uh, thank you. So, it, it, right, so this is it's something that wasn't required, and so because it wasn't required, it wasn't happening. And, you know, I, um, if I can comment on both of these, it's to make sure that, um, that, that we don't, just because a student is a PSEO and maybe just off campus, that the, their high school of record still um, isn't, it can, you know, know, where they be, know what's going on. Because, you know, you don't want to lose a student that they fail and, you know, then stop their education because of that experience. So it's, I, I think that's what we're, um, so just a couple of provisions that, um, um, you know, had good bipartisan support and it's just make sure that communication for both of these um, stays maintained. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Representative Joachim. Thank you. And thank you for asking that question. This was a... Uh, um, a bill from Representative Gilman, and uh, it has been carried in the past, and we've been trying to pass it. The, the districts want to know how well their kids are doing mm -hmm. before they're um, disenrolled, or mm -hmm. they also, districts are paying for classes at a certain point, even if the student drops out. So oh. it's better to keep track and make sure we're making sure that our kids are successful if they're doing this. Representative Krisha. Thank you, and thank you, Madam Chair. And I just want to thank uh, Chair Joachim and Chair Pryor for uh, fighting for this as well. It is a good provision, and I'm happy that you're taking it on. Thank you. All right, with that in mind, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The Section 44 has been adopted, or 45, excuse me. And now we are on to Section 46. Uh, Madam Chair Member, Section 46 is on page R38 of the side-by-side. -side. Um, this is another PSEO provision requiring a secondary pupil enrolled in a post-secondary course to provide the secondary school with the pupils um, uh, an interim or non-final grades earned during the academic term. Comments, questions? Representative Krisha. Same comments. Thank you, Chair Joachim, Chair Pryor, and thank you, Senator, for adopting it. Bet. Anybody else? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Section 46 is adopted. All right, so now we're, do we need to move the whole entire? We still got Just one more. Madam Chair, at the, the bottom there's the Senate only. Okay. Hmm? Would you please re, um, explain what's that, that is? Madam Chair, members, uh, um, Senate Article 2 of uh, Senate Bill 1311, uh, Section 4, is uh, language on um, R45 to R48 of the side-by-side -side, uh, bill language. And it is uh, uh, requirements for uh, students safe at school, which deals with active shooter drills. Any questions? Oh, Representative Pryor. Um, just a, a comment. Um, uh, thank you, Senate, for um, including this in your bill. It was a bill that we did here in the policy committee, um, but it was after we had already moved our policy bill out of the committee to Ed Finance, and so I had not included it. And um, I appreciate that you were able to include it um, and to know that we did hear it and, and do appreciate um, the substance of what's happening. And I think there can still be more kind of conversation about, about what, um, you know, how we keep our students safe at school because that is a shared um, yeah it, there's a word beyond interest it's what and value it's it, it's a share this is something that we will continue to work on because we are all passionate about about our school our schools our students not only just as, as much as possible being safe and also feeling safe in the classroom so uh, appreciate the Senate's work on this and and look forward to the continued work any other comments? Uh, Representative Krisha. Thank you. And just uh, just for my understanding, it didn't make it through finance, but what would be different than what's happening now under this provision? What does this add? Um, and, yep. and research would be fine. Yep. Would you like to? Well, I'm going to ask um, Senator Mayquay to explain, and then uh, Ms. Lewis, if you have anything to add, you can do that. Thank you, Madam Chair, and Representative Krisha, that was my bill, so that's why they're asking me to um, do it. Right now in statute, we don't differentiate between active shooter drills and active shooter simulations, and so this really just puts some 
um, guardrails and parameters and definitions around what is a sh uh, active shooter simulation, what is an active shooter drill, um, and kind of the processes that need to be in place for those in schools. Um, parents having the opportunity to opt their children out if that is appropriate, um, that it has to be you know evidence-based, um, that if they're gonna do uh, active shooter simulations, which are basically like full scale drills that can often mimic what an active shooter situation would look like that more than 50% of the children are not on campus, um, that there's notice provided if possible. Um, and it, it did have bipartisan support and I think Senator Duckworth, um, and I thank him very much because we had a really good conversation on the floor about this bill and I think it, it showed kind of the importance of its, of, of its presence in this bill. Yeah. Sen uh, Representative Krisha. So, so I just have to ask, what's the difference between a drill and simulation? It's a great mm. question. Yes, Senator Duckworth. <laughs> Senator Duckworth. So I'm happy to answer that question because I had I learned that on the floor, which you never want to be learning something right. on the floor. <clears throat> um, it, when you're conducting the drill, that school-wide students, teachers, all the staff are there. They're conducting it and, and uh, responding how they've been trained to. Simulation would be um, uh, maybe you're bringing in some law enforcement folks. You're actually you, you, you might understand. not want to necessarily have students there when you're actively simulating uh, a shooter being in the building. There might even be some simulations used, a much more realistic scenario. And concern was in hearing from parents that they may not want their children there for obvious reasons if a simulation is occurring rather than a drill. And, you know, I'll, I'll just speak to that part a little bit. Um, as having been an elementary school teacher for about 20 years and having gone through both of those, both the simulation as well as the drill, uh, it really does freak kids out. Mm -hmm. When they see police coming up to the building and we're in a lockdown state and they're walking around rattling doors and looking in windows trying to see if they can see anyone, it really does have an adverse effect on our students. And one thing I really appreciate about this bill is the fact that um, after there is either a drill or whatever is going to happen, that um, teachers are able to have time in their classroom with their students to talk about what happened, to deal with any of the emotional um, issues that, I mean, because there were a number of kids that freaked out and were crying and sobbing and absolutely terrified. And the fact that this is requiring kind of a come back and recenter ourselves and talk about this, uh, I think that's one of the most important parts of this bill. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chair Joachim. Yes, I'd also like to thank the Senate for getting this in because we just ran out of time, basically. And if you think about the difference, too, between a uh, drill and a simulation, um, we do fire drills all the time in schools to make sure kids can get out of the school safely. And you can do that without lighting a hallway on fire. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the difference. And I'd have to echo um, Chair Kunish's comments. I've been through active shooter drills. Uh, the drills with students um, from kindergarten on through high school and it doesn't matter what age they are it really can be a traumatic experience they all act a little differently that way um, you know I had one in kindergarten where we were huddled under the table and they just one of the students just like did the thumbs up and wanted to bump my thumb and then was quiet the rest of the day um, to a high school <coughs> study hall where um, you could hear the nervous giggles when they were trying to hide under their tables. So it really, um, it really is something we need to continue to talk about and how we handle it, but this is a good first step. Uh, Representative Hill. No, I really appreciate this, uh, this being uh, included. I, I think it's important to note at the high school level when we do our lockdown drills, um, the first thing that happens is the eyes of the students go right to the teacher. And the question is always asked, did you know about this? Did you know this was scheduled? Um, and even the lockdown drills themselves can be traumatic for some of our students. So this is an important step as we, uh, as we move forward. So thanks for its inclusion. I'm sure. Uh, uh, Senator McQuaid. Thank you. And, and just one of the things I wanted to add is that this bill was um, created in part with the inclusion of students because I think one thing we have a lot of teachers at this table, which I'm eternally grateful for, but most of us went through our you know, middle school, high school, elementary career without ever having to go through these. And so this bill really reflects the input of students who are affected by active shooter drills. Um, and so that, it, it reflects that. And I'm really grateful for their work because this wouldn't be where it is without them. We need the students' voices in the work that we're doing for sure. And this is one that was so important, so thank you. All right, unless anybody else has comments, all in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Senate, uh, Senate Section 4 has been adopted. All right. We are going to move on to Article 6. And the first one that we have is uh, Senate Section 1. And Senator Swadzinski, would you please make a motion to move this bill? I move Article 6, Section 1. And Ms. Lewis, would you please explain the bill Absolutely. or the section? Uh, Madam Chair and members, uh, Article 6 of Senate File 1311, it's Section 1, uh, is on page R1, A6, in the side by side language. And uh, um, both bodies had the that section in there, but the Senate had additional language regarding um, char charter management organizations and educational management organizations, in addition to the both bodies had the market need and demand study. Thank you. Give you all a minute to find it if you're looking. Any questions, members? Nope. Seeing none, all in favor of Article 6, Section 1, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Section 1, Article 6 has been uh, approved. On to Section 6 from Article 6. Ms. Lewis? Yes, Madam Chair, members, uh, Section Six uh, from Article Six is on page R four of the side by side language, and uh, it is uh, um, a difference between the two bodies. But the uh, it's what is included in an application um, for a charter school and the uh, language is reorganized differently or organized differently, as well as the um, uh, and mainly because the Senate had the uh, um, CMO EMO language. Thank you. Madam Chair. Senator McClay. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. And just for um, folks who are um, from the, we can say House, but we're not on the floor. We can say that we don't have to say other body. Um, this was a, a bill from our um, Republican lead, Senator Coleman, and she worked really closely with the charter schools for these sections. And so I just wanted to, to, to you know, tell folks that because I think it's really important to note where we had strong bipartisan support for things and, and where we had our leads on our committees doing a lot of the work too. Thank you. Um, so Representative Pryor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, yes, thank you, Senator McQuaid. And, and since we're sitting in the House, I guess we can say House. <laughs> I mean, it's, hard not, it's hard not to say it. <laughs> um, and the SOB in the state office building, excuse yes. me. <laughs> um, we, we do appreciate these provisions and, and there were, we, we, we had, the, had the discussions and had, you know, said this is coming. Um, but again, um, it's good that we had two different policy committees working uh, because there was a lot of work to be done and sometimes one body had more time to, to get into something than the other body did. And um, so we appreciate the work that you did and, and are very happy to accept this. And Senator Gustafson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm wondering if council can um, clarify when when it says licensed personnel does that include administration miss lewis um madam chair members uh i believe charter schools are not required to have a licensed principal so if it is if that principal is licensed yes but if not no so j thank you madam chair just to clarify that means that from now on principals at charter schools would have to be licensed no no um, okay it does not madam chair members i'm sorry it does not change the section of of uh law in the charter school law about the licensing requirements for uh administrators okay senator gustafson <laughs> i mean that's a problem <laughs> um and i'm not so i, I don't serve in ed policy and I, I wasn't in the conference committee um and I didn't, unfortunately, hear Senator Coleman's bill, which, so I, I would love to talk to the author of the bill to find out a little bit more. You know, I guess this is something we can work on, you know, next session. But I would, 
or I don't know how this works and I don't like to learn in real time in front of cameras, but I mean, is it something that is, can be amended at this point or is that to, you know, just to add and administration or is that? Senator Gustafson, uh, I think Senator Sods Chair Sodzinski would like to make a comment. Um, let's work on this next year okay. and make, get it right because okay. I agree with you. Yeah. So if we can make this a priority for us next year in policy, let's do that. Okay. Representative Krisha. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I actually just don't think this is needed. I don't know why we would adopt it. I mean, if we're still going to work on it next year, why don't we just set it aside? And it's not preventing any charter school at all from doing their business now. It's not something that, I mean, this is not have to have done. Um, and I actually do agree that we could work on this and just set it aside. But that, I mean, why do things that we don't have to do? That's just how I see it. Thank you. Uh, Senator McQuaid. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll, I'll just say um, that the, the piece that Senator Gustafson is talking about is, is a little bit separate from what we're talking about here. Um, and just to repeat a little bit of what Senator Coleman talked about, um, wanting to make sure, and this was really a, a collaboration between Senator Coleman and um, the the larger organization that really deals with charter schools in, in Minnesota, making sure that we have really clear definitions um, and making sure that we are creating all the right conditions for charter schools to succeed. And they really feel like these provisions are how we're going to ensure that to happen. And so this was um, a lot of stakeholder work went in. Senator Coleman did a lot of work too. So this this is ready for prime time. The work on this piece is done. I think the separate piece about the licensing of, of um, principals in, in charter schools is a whole different section of law and we can deal with that next year. But this is ready and Senator Coleman did a lot of really good work on this. Representative Krisha. So, uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. And so, Senator Quaid, so are, are you saying there's charter schools that will fail if we don't have this provision? I mean, you said that this will allow them to succeed. So is the contrary to that true then? They need this? Senator May Quaid. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Representative Krisha, um, I'll give you a really good example. There was, um, there was a charter school in my district. It's Fit Academy. They are wonderful. They are great. But there was a charter school in that same building the um, previous few years. And because the uh, role of the charter school wasn't actually – like a good fit for the district. They didn't have enough enrollment to keep up and then they went under and then in the middle of the school year they had to send those kids back into the schools and it was this like mad scramble to make sure that they had enough special ed teachers and so um, one of the things that they want to make sure, for example, that there is a needs assessment done in a community for a specific type of charter school, um, that there's a plan around information, that um, the leasing of the building is, is happening and there's only one charter school in that building and there's one landlord that they can have direct communication with. So a lot of this came from charter schools themselves saying like, look, without this in law, um, there are places where things can get tricky without it intending to, right? We're subcontracting out the leasing of the building from this other person, and we can't get a hold of them to fix this air conditioning problem that's actually required to be in law, and it's requiring us to be compliant for the air quality in the school, right? So it's not that the charter schools are failing. It's that the regulations around it weren't clear enough or robust enough to make sure that they are set up to succeed, and they felt like this these definitions, these parameters, we're going to give them um, really, really strong guardrails to make sure that every charter school that starts in the state of Minnesota can succeed as it's intended to. So, yeah. Follow up? Yeah, thank you. Final comment. So again, I just, uh, all of that could be done without this. Uh, I think charter schools don't need this language at this point if we're gonna work on it. So again, I, I just go back to, I, I just don't believe it's necessary. Thank you. Any other comments <laughs> or questions? All right. All in favor of adopting Article 6, Section 6, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Section 6 is adopted. Uh, next, we are on to Section 14. Ms. Lewis. Madam Chair and members, uh, uh, Article 6 of 1311, uh, Section 14 can be found uh, starting on the bottom of page R11A6. And uh, this section pertains to the uh, audit reports and, uh, that are required of charter schools. And uh, it's a Senate-only provision. And because uh, if you look at page R13, there are requirements um, uh, for public accounting and reporting for charter management organizations and education management organization agreements. Questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor of uh, Section 14 of Article 6, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Section 14 is adopted. 
Uh, now we have section 10. Miss Lewis. Oh, this is Miss Para. Um, thank you, Madam Chair members. Um, section 10. Let's see, flip back to it. Um, starts on page R8 of the of Article 6. Um, and this is the A54 amendment um, that was uh, that I previously reviewed. It relates to admissions uh, requirements for charter school. Um, so it has language relating to um, admission being free to eligible pupils that reside in Minnesota, um, uh, students in pre-kindergarten programs, and there's a provision um, that was just slightly different um, between the House and Senate relating to um, uh, schools uh, serving students with a primary disability of deaf, deaf, blind, or hard of hearing. Questions or comments? All right, seeing none, um, all in favor of adopting Article 6, Section 10, say aye. 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 Oh, as amended. Um, any in opposition? All right, Article 10, as amended, has been adopted. So that concludes the work that we've um, done this morning. I can tell you that it's been uh, many hours of good hard work and discussion and um, uh, debate. And so uh, going forward, or the only thing we have to do right now is to um, close these articles. And we're going to send these articles, be just Article 6. OK, Article 6 to the reviser and we will continue to build this this beautiful omnibus bill and with that we are adjourned oh. oops excuse me we are recessed